Well, hey everyone, just testing out the JAT501 amplifier card here. I have it mounted on the nice large heat sink. This is really the size of the heat sink you should be using. You know what they say, no heat sink is too large. And, well, it's facing down because I'm doing tests on it. Normally you'd want the fins to the side so air can pass through convect away the heat but yeah I just have it mounted here I don't have the standoffs or anything because this is not a permanent setup it's just to run some tests and I got the power supply connected here the power supply is at its max plus and minus 32 volts why this amp can run at a higher voltage that's just the limit of my power supply. I have it connected to the resistor bank here. I'm running it at 2 ohm loads for some stress tests. Normally you don't want to use it. It's really rated for 4 ohms minimum with reactive speaker loads. So yeah, I wouldn't recommend running it at 2 ohms. Though you could if you wanted, I suppose probably want to lower the voltage a little bit but I like to be conservative with the ratings here just say 4 ohms minimum okay so I had to do some setup now, if you followed the previous video I mentioned that you want to test if the circuit is working you know after you solder all the components on you know one mistake could cause a big issue so if you set it up and run it at a low voltage like I did in the other video and with some sort of current limit you can make sure the thing is working after you have done that you know done those preliminary tests then you can turn the bias down and connect it to a higher voltage that would still recommend some sort of current limit and then you want to set the bias up so let me get the camera here on a tripod and uh, show you what's going on. Uh, before I did that though, I took some voltage measurements, made sure, uh, you know, measure across the resistors here in the input stage, the 220 emitter degeneration resistors, which are, let me get my schematic out, uh, here's the differential input stage, long tail pair. Uh, measure across these resistors. Uh, each side should be uh, about 1.2 or 3 milliamps or so. So the total stage is running 2.4, 2.5 milliamps. And also checked this stage I'm running it at six and a half milliamps. With uh, when I did simulations, I uh, made sure that was enough current, so I wouldn't run into any problems. So it's important to make sure you select the transistor gains, as I mentioned previously. Make sure they have enough gain. Okay. Anyway, I'm going to uh, get the camera on a tripod here. Now this board has connectors for an outboard protection circuit and it just monitors across the emitters of the output transistors and the output itself. There's three connections. And you can probe the outer two connection points which are across the, uh, the emitters of the output transistors or in other words the uh, emitter resistors. And Use that to set the bias. So with the bias turned all the way down, you power up the amplifier and twiddle the little dial here, or as Shanga would say, rototwibulate, this little rototwibulator here. Adjust that until you get 26 millivolts. So if I put the probes on this connection, You 
you can see it's about it's right now around 25 and a half so at that level the output stage bias would be around 50 mil or I'm sorry 60 milliamps which I would say is good for eliminating crossover distortion now there is what's known as an optimum setting it might be a little higher around 80 milliamps or something like that but you know it depends on how much heat how much standby idle power is going to be drawn but anyway I set that up and it doesn't matter if the amp is hot or cold it stays at that same bias very good bias stability another thing I was looking at was the DC output offset and we'll check that now I got the probes on the output connection and it's around three point something millivolts very low very good and even if I turn the signal on I have a 2 ohm load did I mention that before I'm, I'm testing with a 2 ohm load kind of stress testing the amp and um, if I turn it on and that's drawing about 2.6 amps or so off the supply and this is not measuring AC of course and it's staying at around 3 millivolts when I turn that off it stays at 3 millivolts even though these transistors got quite a bit warm eh, they're not really too warm they're pretty well heat sinked emitter resistors warm up a little bit because of course running a 2 ohm load now watch this here. I'm going to get my hand out of the way. Really need a better solution for video. I'm on a tripod right now. Now, these transistors, there's four transistors together right here. And these ones on the top here are the differential transistors the uh, the two transistors in the differential input stage the other two are the current mirror now let me uh, warm up my finger a little bit here and touch one of the transistors see how it changes look at the meter there now I'll touch the other one I was touching the one on the left and now here's the one on the right so it's going to pull it down so you can see how the different gain will affect the output offset. And that's why it's important to match those transistors and also why I used 1% resistors. Now you might be saying, wouldn't it be beneficial to tie these transistors together so they're always at the same temperature? Well, I mean, as long as you're not touching it, they're always going to be at the same temperature. They're fairly close together. I don't see any sense in, you know, monkeying around with these transistors. I mean, if it makes you feel good, you can tie them together. But this amplifier handles AC signals. Those transistors are always going to be around the same temperature. So like I just showed earlier, after that power excursion, how the offset didn't really change. And stayed the same throughout well it ran into a problem here I was going to test how much power it puts into two ohm loads out of curiosity of course my uh, power supply does go into a uh, current limit because that's too much current for it and when I was testing the amp shut down the waveform just went bloop it's on, but it's not drawing any current. So, hopefully it didn't pop anything. Let's zoom in a bit. I'm going to check those fuses. I do have fuses on board here. And 
that is a bit much you know it's just a little bit more that the supply can put out 3.2 amps of course we have those capacitors that right here hooked up and uh, those could supply a lot of extra capacitor or uh, current so hopefully nothing blew up and opened the fuse so uh, here's the negative rail fuse and oh it help if I would put it into volts because the power is on no voltage there 32 volts here so that fuse opened up okay we took care of that problem that's what aluminum foil is for now of course you don't want to really do this but you know again I'm testing the amp on my current limited supply and to save fuses because we are running it at 2 ohm loads I just put the foil on there but anyhow don't get any crazy ideas let's zoom in onto the scope you have to go at an angle there let's see what happens now okay here the uh, power supply click and it goes into current limit so I have to yeah find where it stops and then put some waveforms on the screen and get a measurement looks like 13.82 volts so not a lot of volts really because the power supply limits on us so it ended up 95 watts so let me switch this to 4 ohms and see what we get uh, looks like we're getting 19.3 and that comes out to 93 watts that's the same we were getting on the prototype and of course I could run it all the way up to its actual clipping point because we don't go into any sort of current limit okay I'll continue on doing more tests frequency response and crossing my fingers with the step response test for stability hoping the thing doesn't have any issues like I said before I don't suspect that there will be any because you know the prototype work but okay guys I'm wrapping up the tests here I'm doing a step response test and uh, I haven't found any issues yet I measured the bandwidth of the amplifier at 3.7 hertz out to 210 kilohertz. And why does an audio amplifier need that bandwidth? Uh, well, I explained that before. It has to do with open loop gain and uh, low distortion at high frequencies. And I'm not going to get into all that again. And I have the... Uh, input low pass filter removed and I never put it in there so I can run all these tests so the step response test I'm putting in a square wave and uh, got the scope hooked up and I know somebody's going to complain and say I'm not probing like I should you know this is ideal but I don't care what the square wave looks like I don't care if there's a little bumpy or uh, rounded a bit I just want to see if the thing is stable or not. So when I take this one microfarad cap and uh, put it across the output, you get a ring. And that ring should quickly decay. And that's what it does. This is exactly what I would expect. You know, just a couple cycles of a ring and it goes back flat. Now, if it kept on ringing or had a constant ring, or I mean a constant waveform, the thing would be oscillating. And you have to run this test, different loads, different capacitance, 
even different signal levels. Yeah, don't want to go over one microfarad. It's a lot of peak current. Uh, start at 1 nanofarad, 10 nanofarads, 100 nanofarads, and like um, 2.7, I should say 0.27 micro, and 1 micro is kind of a thing I run with. So that's at 1. Here's what the 0.27 does. I'm hand holding the camera. Sorry about that. It's a handy cam, so you know, you got to hand hold a handy cam. Just a little overshoot and correction there with the uh, 0.27. And let's try the 0.1 now. 100 nano, in other words, it doesn't do anything. Sometimes I get jitters from the stupid field tech. See my touch this? I get this noise. <laughs> this thing is uh, it's annoying. Thought I had some other problem, but I get these it's like a connection problem, but you know, as long as I leave it alone it seems fine, but if I move something or bump something. But anyhow, yeah. I'm, I got to run a couple more tests, but I doubt I'll see anything. I ran some high signal level tests last night, and I didn't see any issues there either. So, hey, things are looking up for the JAT 501. Fuses bypassed with foil. <laughs> Amplifier project. And, uh... What else can I say? I guess I'm going to wrap it up here. Oh, one thing I almost forgot. There are some changes to the board. I'm going to make some changes to this board. Cosmetic, nothing to change the design, nothing to change the performance or stability. It's just a few little cosmetic things. There's a clearance issue. There's a, a silk screen thing, and I want to move some capacitors. You see that capacitor is real tight there against that resistor. I'm going to move that over just a hair. Little things like that. So I need to hook up with the fellow who's been collaborating with me on the boards and uh, uh, hopefully he can send his email. I don't think I saved it in good old Gmail. It just scrolls off and it's gone forever. But yeah, I'll wrap it up here. Thanks for watching.